Welcome, in this video I'm going to show you how you can perform an exact multinomial test of goodness of fit with R. Uh, I'm using actually Jupiter Lab via Anaconda with an uh, R uh, kernel. The R version I'm using is, as you can see, 3.61. And by default I have loaded the stats, graphics, uh, graphic devices, utilities, datasets, and methods, and base packages. Um, you can copy paste the code that is uh, here in, for example, RStudio, and it should give you the same results. Now, I'm not going to explain if you should use an exact multinomial test or how to interpret uh, in detail the, the output. Uh, I'm main focus is on how to actually perform the test. Uh, for that, I'll be using a uh, example file, which is uh, from a student survey as a separator. It's going to be a semicolon, and I'm going to um, get the NAs out of the way and just load this as my data. Now, I actually don't need all the data. I only need the location, because that's the field I'm going to be using, and the first few are Rotterdam, Harlem, etc. There were only three categories. We can actually see the observed counts, and that's something we're going to be using on later as well. Um, and I can just say, well, I want a table of location and convert that to a vector immediately. So there were 70 people from Demon, 22 from Harlem, and 16 from Rotterdam. Two other things of interest is the sum of all of these, which should add up to 55. I'm going to store that under N and how many categories I have, which is K in this case, and that should be uh, can be done with the length, and we can just print those to 55 and 3. Last thing we need are our expected probabilities for each category. You can either make a specific array of that, but um, if they're all different, but you can also say, well, I want you to repeat 1 over k, k times, and then all of them should be the same. So in my case, that should be one third for each. So one third, one third, one third seems to be all right. Now there are two libraries that can perform now the test immediately for us. Uh, if you've never installed the particular library, you can use install packages. Uh, you need to do that down once, and then you can load the library. And once I've loaded this library, the EMT, uh, what I can actually do is I can use a function multinomial test. I give it the observed values and the expected. Uh, I don't want to use a chi-square approximation and I also don't want to use any Monte Carlo simulations. So I set those to false. And there it is. We have a probability value, a significance of 0 0.589. So in this case that should be considered usually as uh, not significant. Uh, the other one uh, library is Xnomial, which I can also load because I already installed the ones. This gives me a warning that it's actually made in a different version of R, but okay, it still works. And if I just give it my observed and expected probabilities, it gives the same result to 0 0.589. So that's how you can easily... Um, perform an exact multinomial goodness of fit test using R. If you want to use R only and only the basic packages libraries that come shipped with it then we have some more work for us. Um, we can use the multinomial distribution that's this scary looking formula. R actually has this uh, function in its stats package so I can use the D multinomial uh, I sort all my uh, data uh, from high to low. Uh, I give it my sample size and my expected probabilities. And this will give the probability of our observed count. So you notice this is not the same as those two packages uh, uh, gave us. What we want is a probability like this one or even more extreme. And to find those or more extreme, that's the tricky part. I can start with a vector going from 0 up to my sample size. So in this case 0 to 55. So I want a sequence starting at 0, ending at my 55, in my case n, and a step size of 1. I'll show the first 5 and that should simply be 0, 1, 2, 3 and 4. Now I create a matrix with the same length as the vector, so 0 to 5. Uh, so that should be 6. Um, 
and the width should be equal to my number of categories so I have an empty matrix uh, my number of rows is my sam uh, sample size plus one so I also have zero in there and my number of columns equals k and then for each column I'm simply going to say well um, and my number of counts is going to be um, is going to be added in there so each column will simply have the 0 to um, in my case 55 so now k counts has three columns each going from 0 to 55 we need all possible combinations of these three columns and I can do that with merge um, and I can first merge two columns so merge the first column and then as a data frame the second one I want to keep everything and this will show me then how many rows this actually produces that's 3136 rows so those are all the possible combinations of 0 to 55 and 0 to 55 again so that should be I think 60 uh, 56 times 56 now we can remove any of the rows that is already greater than our sample size because in the end I only want those that have the same size as our uh, sample size so for example the row with 55 and 54 in it is way too big we don't need it so I can remove those by first checking if a row uh, by using row sums um, of this is less than or equal to my sample size then it's good otherwise uh, uh, it's uh, if it's bigger than my sample size already I can remove it and that should remove almost half so I'm only having 1000 uh, 1596 left now I can actually merge the next one uh, so uh, starting for I from 3 to K uh, so if you had more categories this will work I actually shouldn't have well I'll get to that later but I, I can do again a merge uh, and then simply merge the next column with what I've already uh, merged before and then remove all the cases now because I only have three categories uh, we should actually end up with um, if I set them equal to my sample size because uh, now I'm actually done and I only need the ones that are equal to my sample size I end up back at the 1596 I had earlier that's not surprising because this um, second iteration or the second merge with only three columns uh, once I have these the last column will simply be whatever it takes to get it to 55 here I removed everything already that was greater than so this one and this one uh, match in my example um, all right so now for each of these combinations I need to calculate that probability for that particular uh, uh, combination and then uh, I can actually uh, store that under my P observed for all of them so I do an apply uh, all my uh, all my permutations uh, the function is a function of X and it's going to do this function and now I should have all my uh, my p-values for my uh, for each particular combination I only need those that are less than or equal to my probability that I had with the observed one and that gives me luckily the same result as we saw earlier of course you can make all of these in one big function when that's what I did over here is one function that does all of it for me and if I run this function it gives me the same result so uh, no matter how this actually shows us uh, that in my example it was not significant so the probabilities in the population could still be the same for each category there was no significant difference okay i uh, hope this was helpful and thank you for watching